Hi guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about the binary search algorithm for arrays. All right? And um, the binary search is a search algorithm that is a lot faster than the linear search, but uh, it incurs more overhead. Okay, and what is that overhead? Well, your array has to be sorted in some order. Ascending numeric, descending alphabetic, just some order, right? So remember the advantage of a linear search is that order doesn't matter. Well, in binary search, order does matter, and you'll see you'll see why as we go through this thing. All right. So the downside to a binary search uh, again, it's it's got to be in order, uh, and it's a little more complex. It's well, it's it's a it's a more complex algorithm than the uh, linear search. Remember, linear search is simple. We just examine each uh, element of an array in order until we find the target value we're looking for or we run out of elements to, to search. Well, the binary search, what is involved with that algorithm is basically we're going to check the middle of the array. Okay, that's the first step. Uh, and then if that's a match, we're done. Okay, we return the uh, index for the middle element of the array. Otherwise, if it's not, then we're going to cut the array in half. Right? If the target value that we're looking for is less than the middle element, then we're only going. We're going to repeat the process, but we're only going to look uh, at elements that have a value lower than the middle element. Okay? If uh, the target value is higher than the middle element. We're going to repeat the process again, but we're only going to look at the elements in the array that have a value higher than the middle element. Okay. So basically what we end up doing is every time we fail to find the value we're searching for, we cut the array in half. Okay. So after just three failed comparisons, we've knocked out 75% of the elements, right? We, we're only going to, we're not going to have to look through all of those. We're going to have to do comparisons over every single one of those elements. We've knocked out 75% of them, okay? So much, much faster. Okay, so I'm going to use this, uh, this website with some playing cards to uh, illustrate how this works, okay? I think this can be a useful tool uh, t to maybe visualize this and help it help uh, it makes more sense. Okay, so let's assume that each one of these cards is is an element in our array. Okay, so let's uh, let's sort these things ascending uh, ascending numeric. Okay, all right. Binary search. The array has to be sorted first. So as it turns out, for very small arrays, binary search can actually be slower than uh, than a linear search because we have this extra overhead of sorting. Okay, we have to run a sorting algorithm on the array before we can do any searching, right? But for larger arrays, this is definitely faster. All right, so let's say that we are searching for the queen. Okay. So the first step of the array is, or the first step of the algorithm is, we're going to find the middle element. Okay. So, okay. So we determine which uh, value or which element is the middle one. Uh, but in this case, we have an even number, right? So, you know, if we were to try to find the middle, we would have to choose either this one or this one. Well, the way the code is going to work. Uh, the one to the left of the middle is going to be the one we look at. Okay, so the first thing we do is we look at the middle element of the array, and we say, okay, is uh, is this element 10? Is it uh, or this value in this element 10? Does it match what we're looking for? Is it the queen? No, it's not. Okay, so we don't have a find. We haven't found a match. Now we have to decide which half of the array we're going to continue looking in. Okay, so the next thing we do is we ask, uh, is the queen less than 10? No, it's not, right? 
Therefore, it has to be greater than 10, and it has to be in this part of the array. So we can eliminate all of these guys right here. We've just cut our array in half. Now, we're going to look in uh, this half. This is the, the basically what's left of what we're going to search through. And we look at the middle element, this guy right here. Okay. And we say, uh, okay, is uh, this value in the, this middle element, is it the queen? Yes, it is. Matched. We're done. Okay. So this binary search algorithm found the target in two comparisons. Okay. Let's compare that to uh, a linear search. Okay. If we had used a linear search on this array, we would have had one comparison here, one comparison here, one comparison here, one comparison here, one comparison here. We would have had to do five comparisons before we found the target. Right? Two and a half times slower than the binary search in that case. All right. So um, let's take a look at the code for this, and let's take a look at uh, at uh, the algorithm. Okay. Get that out of the way. All right. So binary search algorithm. Binary search algorithm. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to need, we're going to need three variables to help us keep track of our search space. We're going to need three variables. Uh, one is going to be a variable that stores the index of the middle element, uh, and then we're going to use two variables to uh, store the current boundaries of our array that we're searching, or the search space that we're we're searching. Okay. So if we go back and look at our card here, right? When we when we start our array, we have to find the middle value, but we also have to initialize where the end part points are, right? We need to know the index of this guy and this guy because we're searching the entire array. Okay. Now after the the first comparison failed, we eliminated these cards, right? but we aren't actually destroying them or, or cutting the array, resizing the array. All we're doing is changing the boundaries, okay? and those boundaries are going to be stored in, uh, in, array, or, excuse me, in variables. right? So we would have in a variable the last element that uh, we could be searching through, and we'll have in a different variable uh, the first element that we'll be searching through. So in this case, our, those two boundary variables would contain, one of them would contain zero because our initial search was the whole thing, right? So, so if we had a variable like named left, right, the left side of the array, it would have zero in it because it would be the leftmost element that we're searching through, okay? And then uh, we'd have an array, say, like named right, okay? And it would contain five because it would have the rightmost uh, index Right of the uh, element that of the uh, elements that we're searching through. Okay, so once we eliminate these guys from the search space, then all we've done is we've just set our left variable to um, three, right? Because we've eliminated these possible values from our search space. So now we would have a variable left that is set to three, and then the right side the right variable would still be set to 5, right? So we're only going to be searching through elements uh, 3 through 5, okay? So let's let's see what the code looks like for this. Let's go back. Okay, so the first thing we do is we uh, set the boundary variables um, to the ends of the array, right? The left one is going to be equal to 0, and the right variable is going to be equal to n, where n, or n minus 1, where n is the size of the array. Okay. Then we uh, compute uh, the middle index. Okay. Uh, compute the index of the middle element, okay, and store that in variable middle. Okay. And then the next step. Uh, check to see if the value in the middle element is the target. OK. 
Okay. Uh, if it is, we're done. And we return uh, that index. Return the middle index. Otherwise, uh, otherwise we have to determine which half of uh, the array we're going to search in next. Otherwise, if uh, the target value is less than the middle element value, then how, how are we going to do this? We're going to change the boundaries. Okay? If this is the case, then uh, the right variable is set to equal middle minus one. Okay, that brings our that, that brings our boundaries closer together, right? Um, otherwise, okay. else if uh, it's not less than the middle, it has to be to the right of uh, the middle. So we're going to move our left boundary in closer. Okay. Left equals middle plus one. Okay. All right. So we'll call this step one, step two, and we'll call this step three, step four, okay. and then step five. Repeat steps one through four until target is found, or uh, left is greater than right. Okay. If the left value, right, if the left side of the search space, the left boundary, um, has a higher value than the right boundary, that means that the boundaries have crossed over each other. Okay. And we've we've looked through the entire array. Okay. If uh, this is true, if left is greater than right, then return negative one. Okay. Negative one indicates we didn't find anything. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, what the code would uh, look like for this. Uh, for this example, uh, we'll use a character array just to show you that we can do that. Okay. So let's make a prototype. Uh, right. We're going to return an integer because remember we're returning an index of where we found the target or we're returning negative one. So it's going to be an integer. Let's give it a name, call it B search for binary search. We're going to pass it a character array. Right? We're going to have to have a size for the array. We're going to have to let the function know how many elements there are. And then we're going to have to have a target okay, that we're searching for. So we're actually going to be searching for a character. So this time we're going to have a character uh, parameter. Okay. So let's have a function definition. Okay. Uh, we'll call this car for character array. And int size for the size of the array and care target for the target value we're looking for. Thanks. Help me out here. What are you doing? I want a comma. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, write the function to do this. Let's implement the algorithm using using a function. Okay, so we're going to have to have some variables. We're going to have to have those three variables. So let's uh, initialize the left boundary to zero because that's the leftmost element of the array. Right. Let's. Um, Initialize the right boundary to size minus one because that's the rightmost element of the array. Okay, and then we will set we'll have middle, but we won't set it just yet. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna compute that through every iteration of our binary search. Okay. All right. So we're gonna use a loop to help us repeat this, right? Because we're gonna repeatedly uh, be cutting this array in half until we either find the target or we don't find the target. So we want to do this at least once so a do while loop makes sense here. Okay. All right. So do while. We're going to do this while left is uh, 
less than or equal to right. Okay. So until they cross over, we're going to continue doing this loop. Okay. So there's our loop structure for that. That's going to keep cutting the search space in half until uh, the borders of the of the uh, the boundaries of the search space cross over. Okay. So inside, the first thing we want to do inside the slope is we have to compute the middle. Okay. So middle is going to equal the left, right, left plus right divided by two. That's going to find the middle. Okay. And this is going to work even if left plus right is a floating point result in a floating point number. Right. It's going to work, excuse me, even if left plus right is an odd number because remember that uh, integers divided by integers return integers. So let's say left and right are 0 and 9. Right? Well, 9 divided by 2, if they're integers, isn't 4.5, it's 4. Okay. All right. So now we just compare and we check to see if the uh, value stored in the middle element is the target. So if target equals car middle, if this is true, then we're going to return middle. Okay, middle is going to be the index where it's found, and we'd be done. All right. If that's not true, then we have to um, see which half of the array we're going to look in. All right. We're going to shrink our. We're going to. We're going to shrink our uh, search space. In half, so we have to determine which half is going to go away and okay, which one we're going to shrink out of there. Okay, else if target is less than car middle, okay, if the target value is less than the value that's in the middle element, then it must be to the left of the middle, okay. So then what we have to do is we have to move our right boundary, okay, we have to move it to the left. Okay, so this is going to equal middle minus one. Okay. All right, so that will shrink our uh, array in half minus one element. Okay, it'll move it to the left of the middle uh, array. Okay, if it's not less than the, the middle, if the target isn't less than the middle, then it has to be greater than the middle. Okay, so then we move our left boundary. Left equals middle plus one. Okay, so that's it. Let me let me let me put some comments up here. Okay. So let's initialize. Let's define our variables and initialize our boundaries, our boundary variables. Okay. Okay. So inside the do loop, the do while loop, we're going to Compute the middle for the first step. Okay. Um, we're going to check the middle element for the target and return the index if it matches. Okay. Otherwise, we decide which half of the array the value could be in. Okay. We do that by comparing the target to the value stored in the middle element. Okay. And so this do while loop repeats this process over and over and over again until the boundaries cross um, or we find our target and return it. Okay. All right. So if we go through this entire do while loop, uh, left crosses over right. We get out of it. We haven't. That means that we haven't found the value we're looking for. Okay. If we get this far, value not found. So return negative one, and we're done. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's test this thing out. How about we make an array, a character array, and we'll call this our own. Just the list. I don't know. It doesn't matter. No, we call it character C. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. 
and we'll use an initialization list again. Um, but this time it's going to be characters, okay? And it's going to be sorted. Right? It has to be sorted before we can use it. Let's use some constants. Const uh, size equals. There's six elements here. Okay, equals six. Okay, and we'll have a target constant. And the first time we'll do a search for D. Okay, and that should be everything that we need. Let's put the uh, size in there. All right, so let's just compile this thing to see if I made any mistakes so far. No, all right, so so far everything compiles, so at least I have no syntax errors. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, test it. Let's let's actually run the function now. So we'll have another result variable. Okay. And then we're going to assign to it the results of our search. Okay, we're going to pass it the C array. Okay, we're going to pass it the size of the array and our target. So let's look for D. Okay, and then we'll have that if statement again. If result equals negative one, uh, return or not return? Excuse me. We're going to say C out. Uh, target not found. Okay. Otherwise, if uh, the result is anything other than negative one, then we found what we're looking for. Okay. Else, see how target found at element. Uh, right. Element result. Okay. Result is either going to have negative one if nothing's found, or it's going to have a non-negative integer indicating the element where we found it. Okay, so in this case, we should show one, right? Because it should find uh, the target that we're searching for in element one, right? Zero one. Okay, so let's let's try. Okay, works great. All right, let's uh, try a different value just to see what happens. Oops, let me put a target here. Okay. So now all I have to do is change it here. Okay, let's try Z. Okay. And we found it at the last element. No. Okay. Which is index 5. Now let's test it and see what happens uh, if we search for a value that's not in there. Right, we should get target not found because results can equal negative one. And there we go. Okay, so everything works great. So we tested it for values within the uh, array, and we tested it for a value outside the array. And we've demonstrated that uh, these search algorithms will work with multiple data types. All right. So uh, that covers the binary search algorithm. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so we talked about the advantages and the disadvantages of the binary search algorithm. It's much faster than a linear search, uh, but the array has to be pre-sorted. Okay, so uh, binary search could be slower on smaller arrays, right? Because you're you're going to have to run the uh, sorting algorithm, a uh, sorting algorithm on the array before you can actually do the search. Okay, and um, we implemented a version of the algorithm in here. Okay, so. It's a little more complex than the uh, than the linear search, but not by much. Okay, all you have to remember is that we're finding the middle, right? If it matches, we're done. If it's not, we're gonna sh we're gonna lop off half of the search space. Okay, we're gonna move the boundaries inside these variables closer and closer together. Okay, and we're only searching between the boundaries. Okay, so each time we find the middle. If it matches, we're done. We return that middle index. Otherwise, we see which half of the array the value could be in, and then we uh, shrink our search space as accordingly. Right? And if 
the left boundary crosses over the right boundary, we know we haven't found the value we're searching for. So if we get this far, if the do while loop finishes execution, we haven't found anything, so we return negative one. Okay? So I hope that you found this video useful. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, please email me or stop by my office hours. All right? Great. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.